right, welcome to rural Atlanta. Uh, this is a rather large project that we've worked on. It's the biggest garage I've ever done. Uh, it's 100 feet long, 50 feet deep. Uh, we have a dedicated office, a, a car lift mechanics area. We have a dedicated wash bay uh, and a bunch of area for car storage. So let's go inside and show you all the stuff we worked on. I figure we have about 350 man hours into this project and I uh, wanted to show you all the stuff that we did. So let's go inside. So we have 5,000 square feet of Swiss tracks, uh, which is a little daunting. Uh, it took us many, many days. Each one of us, there was uh, five of us that worked on this project. I guess six of us, as uh, Trevor came and helped us out for a, for a day and a half. Uh, but the, the first thing you'll notice is just the sheer magnitude of how many tiles there are. Uh, I'm not sure how many it added up to, but uh, a few thousand tiles, a uh, few, about a thousand cuts, uh, and you'll notice just the sheer size of the place. Uh, this is a, you know, a uh, E39 M5, and you can see, you know, it, it's dwarfed by the size of the building. Uh, I think this is the perfect size that most people would dream to have. You can do five cars wide. Uh, this area here is designed to hold about, uh, I would say 15, maybe 20 cars. Uh, you could easily go four deep, I think comfortably three deep with the room to add auto stackers in the future. Um, the owner, John, doesn't have, uh, doesn't have a lot of cars, but he, he is uh, an aspiring BMW collector. Uh, so he's done it the right way, which is to build the garage first. Uh, he has, I think, about a half a dozen cars, um, but uh, he aspires to have, have quite a few more that will be going in here. So when you, when you start to when you get over the scale of it and the size of it and you start to look at the detail, uh, this area here will, is, the, is the mechanical section. Uh, we have a 9,000 pound recessed Nussbaum lift done in custom black. Uh, we also built, uh, Mike helped us uh, fabricate and build a custom sonic cabinet. Didn't look like this when we got it, um, but the, the Nussbaum uh, lift controller, we started hacking it apart, eventually ended up just taking the unit, you know, splitting it in half, taking the control box and the up-down controller and put it in into this cabinet. Uh, we, uh, we have another countertop piece coming, because we didn't intend for this to fit here, uh, but doing the custom fabrication Getting the lift controlled via this is way cleaner, way nicer than what, uh, what, what I'd even hoped for. So when we got here, if you go back and watch the series, uh, this was sort of done. Uh, we ended up needing to cut and put a four inch conduit in. We needed to do some, uh, some floor level or as well. That's why the, the basin looks so clean. Uh, and, uh, and then this, uh, this is uh, a, a specific ramp that Nussbaum makes so that you can leave the ramps down in, in, in hanging mode. Uh, and then they come back to give you a flush mount uh, for when the, um, when the lift is down on the floor. So you have the ability to extend the ramp. So on something like a, you know, an F10 M5, you would need a you would need a, a longer longer unit or longer ramp. On your M3, you can fit you know within this this span, uh, but you should be able to fit any car. The reason why we chose 9,000 pounds here is we could do you know on a Raptor or a you know a Dually or any any kind of vehicle that you could dream up. Uh, plus the 9,000 has a better pump, it's smoother sounding and really is a, an awesome set of looks. I think it looks great in black. So this is one of the more prominent features in the garage. I, th I think, I'm sure I'm not the first person to do this, but this is uh, something I dreamt up in our first OGHQ uh, was to put uh, hose reels, power and air on all four corners. The beauty of a scissor lift is that you're able to put a car on it, gain 360 degree access, you could drop a transmission, you could change the drive shaft, you can do the exhaust, you can do engine work, you can generally drop a subframe. You can do almost anything you can do on a two post, but you don't have anything impeding you. There's no posts on the side. Uh, theoretically, it's a little easier to install if you had the, you know, the foundation poured properly. Uh, and so having a scissor lift with air and power at all four corners, to me, makes it the best uh, of all worlds, detailing, mechanic focused. You can change fluids, you can do whatever you want. 
Of course, a lot of people talk about the Swiss Tracks flooring. The nice thing about this, we have a floor tile popper. Stick the popper in, you can pop the tile up, and clean up. Obviously, a garage of this level, we're gonna be working on cars of this level as well. Uh, and so chances are we're gonna be dumping, you know, the transmission fluid and uh, radiator fluid all over the place. So, so I think we're gonna be safe here with, uh, with Swiss Tracks. The nice thing also, he has two other he has a four car and another two car uh, with one has Swiss tracks in it. The other two don't because it's a new house. Uh, there's leaves and junk all up in the in the one without Swiss tracks. The other little leaves get trapped and you just vacuum it up whenever you feel like. So it's actually counter to what you think and actually really, really clean. So another prominent feature here in the garage is the Sonic MSS Plus. Um, we we have quite a few, uh, with a global supply crunch, we have quite a few cabinets that are sitting in a, on a container ship somewhere uh, that we ordered four or five months ago that we're waiting on. Uh, this area here will stay open. Uh, we do have an, uh, a piece going here, uh, but there will be upper cabinets all the way across. There is a sink, which unfortunately was damaged in shipping. So there's a 890 millimeter wide sink. And then we have another tall closet. So as substantial as this array is, it's about to get a whole lot bigger uh, here coming up in the not too distant future. Uh, you have your recycling, which is where we're gonna store our dirty microfiber towels will go in here as well as the other side will be for garbage. Uh, so you have this substantial uh, recycling thing that uh, really uh, one of my favorite things of the cabinets is their, is their garbage, garbage handling, garbage capability. Now, the reason why I love these cabinets so much outside of their, you know, their fit and finish is this. Not the Milwaukee tools, but this. This is change your darn life. Uh, the, the Sonic foam inlay systems, the Sonic tools are really nice. Um, I wouldn't call them the best tools in the world, but I like them a lot. The best tools I've ever owned. Uh, but all of this, uh, all of the not being the best tool in the world is completely offset by this organization, next level of uh, organization. And we have, right now we have um, uh, 17 drawers filled with tools. Uh, there are two more coming uh, that we have to uh, that we're you know waiting waiting for it to show up, but the MSS Plus these are extra deep, and the drawers come all the way out so you can access your entire tool array. Uh, and the the idea here is that if you did have a tool missing, uh, you would know that there was um, something you needed need, either needed to replace or figure out where you left it. So this array, this area here is designed to be our functioning working area. Uh, so this is where we'll be doing any kind of mechanical work, stuff like that. Um, the homeowner, John, would likely hire somebody to come and do that. Um, but it is nice to have it all here if you're ever gonna work on anything. Him and his buddies come out here and play with all this stuff. It's, uh, it's I think, a dream come true, having 19 drawers look like this. Another neat thing about this cabinet, this array on, on these, these 720 millimeter cabinets is it does have a, a little desk thing here that comes out that you could lock in place and kind of use this to write on. I don't know, it's kind of neat. I, uh, I think I would use this periodically. I've never had one of these 720 millimeter cabinets. And we've outfitted whatever we don't have, we will have. Uh, so when I come back here in February, we'll probably send up a bunch of tool grid and we'll grid out some of the drawers. Um, now is probably not a good time for me to do it because um, you know, we're 14, 14, 16 hour days, seven days in. This is the uh, end of the uh, seventh day that we've been here. So I got some work to do to uh, come in and organize, but I've done some things like, you know, tie up the wires and stage and set up our batteries so that we have we have our milwaukee batteries ready to go um, but we do have this garage project isn't complete until until it is which will probably be never so then this is my favorite thing in the whole garage this is right smack in the middle this transom window at the top is smack center so this is our 50 foot mark uh, and so our tv this is a 77 inch sony uh, a 
A90 uh, OLED, uh, which uh, if you're watching, you know, uh, the own owner is a big uh, college football fan, so we probably, you know, put on a football game and watch it. Uh, we had these um, these these countertops made. They made them in a day. Uh, what's uh, was it? Sasha, Mike. This. Saha. Raz from Saha made these here in Atlanta. Um, we've uh, also talked to him about maybe making us some, some countertops that we can provide to you as well. Uh, but uh, I have, uh, have some more Milwaukee stuff in here. Uh, we did an entire Milwaukee master collection, my master collection, Obsessed Garage collection. Uh, there are 45 tools. There's 13 more that are coming. Um, that again, we're waiting on that were that were back ordered, uh, but check this out. Eventually, I'm going to have some drawer organization. Uh, we're also building out. John was the first person to buy uh, my uh, accessory package. Of uh, it's uh, ends up being about 1,700 piece set of accessories, and so I'm going to be working on getting getting drawer organization systems to take care of stuff like this to make sure it's all nice and organized and stay organized in, in you know, these specific drawer types. So we'll head down that path at some point. We do have, he has every single thing I've ever uh, offered from a detailing perspective. Uh, so we've got towels galore all over the place. Uh, I, I do have two more closets that are coming here that'll be our microfiber storage solutions for now. I've put them in here, uh, but we will, have, um, we will have dedicated microfiber cabinets. We also have a dedicated speed queen washer and dryer. And then my favorite part of this whole thing are the Dynaudio Core 59s which, believe it or not, these little speakers are deafening and super smooth. So we have a pair of Core 59s, a Dynaudio Core subwoofer, which are four nine-inch woofers in one enclosure, and it's all controlled via Blue OS and the NAD C685 preamp. Uh, after we finish up here today, tomorrow morning, I'm gonna come in and do some, uh, do some room calibration. I understand that you know the garage is not a great place for audio, but it sure is a lot of fun. And so I want to have a great system, and I've found that studio monitors actually do really well in a garage. So this area over here that looks really empty, we have a single car sitting here just to give you a perspective of the scale, uh, but this will be the car storage area. We'll have uh, CTEC chargers snaked in. Uh, what I may want to try to do in the future is figure out some sort of solution to bring the CTEC down from the ceiling uh, so we can trickle charge the various cars. We may end up, like I said, with some auto stackers. If I can talk them into that, that would look pretty incredible here. Um, but the, this section will be for car storage. We do have, uh, and we ran out of pipe, um, but we are going to be, or ran out of unions for the pipe. Uh, we are going to have a hose reel and power reel here on the other side of the closet that's coming uh, for airing up tires and doing whatever you need to do, vacuuming out cars if they're sitting over here in this section. And just to break up the area, we have this other little array, uh, the 1540 cabinet. That's what this one is with the big giant drawer. I want to have just a zillion of these in my life. But the 1540 cabinet is the way to go. Right now, I've set this up as our polishing station uh, where I've done, uh, we'll do interior detailing, waterless wash detailing. I figured we'd put over in this area for when you're, you know, if you're just wiping down a car, you do waterless washing. And uh, you'd probably polish on the lift. Uh, but let's say, I don't know, it just seemed, seemed to make sense to me to bring and put all my polishers over here and uh, put all my polishing supplies in this, uh, in this area as well uh, as we're waiting on a few other, you know, a few other tall cabinets to come in. But I'm going to spend a few days here uh, after, after everybody leaves and uh, I'm actually staying in the guest house up right, right up the, you know, 100 feet away. Um, I'm going to stay a couple more days and just come in here and tinker and you know, figure out where, where everything needs to go. So then you walk over in this area. Um, this is a custom made 500-ish pound um, metal frames, wood solid core door. The handles are incredible. Um, this is a four foot wide door, which I suspect will get used quite a bit because this is a fully conditioned, fully dehumidified garage. 
These are temporary doors, believe it or not, as nice as they are. Um, there's a, uh, if you've watched the uh, Drivers Club video that I've done in the past, or you've been to some BMW dealerships, uh, Rytec makes, I think, the world's best high-speed door. So we have two 16 by 16 square Rytec spiral doors uh, that will go up in two seconds, uh, and uh, it'll help keep the you know, climate control in here done. They're insulated as well. Uh, they're back ordered till sometime in February. Uh, they're waiting on you know, raw materials in order to manufacture those. So for the time being, we have these really nice basic roll-ups that will be replaced with an insulated high-speed door here shortly. Can't wait to come back and play with those. So then we have the masterpiece, dedicated wash bay. Just freaking insane. <laughs> So John just basically told Kyle and I, let us do whatever, you know, whatever made sense. We've kind of worked on this together. Uh, it was about a year and a half ago when we first discussed doing this project and uh, we completed it here today. Underneath the Swiss tracks here is, uh, is a slot drain. It's a roughly 20 foot stainless wash uh, slot drain with a, with a catch basin. You really don't need to do much with this. Um, it should be pretty well self-sustaining. Uh, you will need to pull out and change the filter and pull the filter basket out occasionally, but you just pop the four tiles out, do that once a year, should be fine. Swiss Tracks is actually a great solution for this because all of your dirt, there's a bunch of mud on the floor from contractors walking in and out that um, you can just spray off the floor. There's channels, so the water will find its way down to the slot drain. And the other nice thing is they did a really good job pouring this foundation here. I can feel the pitch. Like if I took my bucket, started rolling it, it'll roll slowly toward the drain. So water shouldn't be an issue at all. Um, plus we have a 100 pint dehumidifier in this dedicated to this room alone. It's, uh, it's just, a, it looks great. And I, I was afraid of Swiss tracks would feel kind of kind of clickety clackety here, but we, we didn't have an issue. So then in here, uh, the concept was to do our utility area behind glass. There's a big, giant, I think it's a four section piece of three quarter inch glass uh, that will be going in this frame right here. Uh, we also decided to do some insulated metal exterior doors to help insulate the sound, keep the sound in that room. Uh, and so then uh, the, the other concept was we would do a knee wall, put our subwoofers in the wall. These are Dynaudio sub RCCs. Uh, and, uh, and we wanted to build this symmetrically uh, with the glass office above looking down on the, on the garage. We've made some adjustments on the fly. Uh, the plan was to put multiple hose reels here as well, uh, power and air. Uh, we ended up doing just power here and moving air to the beams. Uh, it just got a little crowded. Uh, and so we made that adjustment on the fly and I'm really happy we did. Mike spent days on the Prevost piping, making it plumb, making it, uh, making it look fantastic. Uh, and so we have a T up here and we have our two uh, Cox hose reels with our you know, own supplied Prevost Stoflex hose, a nitro rubber hose with our uh, Prevost swiveling couplers as well. Really incredible. Another thing we're waiting on that I think is gonna set this off even more, we have three really cool extra tall, uh, I think they're 36 inches tall by roughly 30 inches wide. They're a timbre door uh, that are gonna flank these two or, or I guess center up on the beams that are flanking it. Uh, and then we have our bucket filler here with a prior uh, P, uh, P118. Anyway, the model number is eluding me. There's a lot going on in this project. So we'll have a 24 inch bucket filler right below here. If you can see through the Swiss tracks, there's a floor sink. So if you have a little pee-pee dribble there, it'll catch it for you and drain it off. So the concept is I bring my bucket, fill it up, and I don't have to get a hose out or go to a sink or anything like that. And then the tile wall is done up to 10 feet. Uh, and then another nice little thing that they did was they factored in, they left the three quarter inch gap. Uh, so it was actually a seven eighths inch gap so that way we could tuck our Swiss tracks underneath the flooring. And uh, you can see our, our drywall dust here. We just finished this two minutes ago. 
uh, because a bunch of our guys are about to get on a plane and head out and head back home. Uh, so this is another thing we're experimenting with, a Mosmatic drying system. Uh, this is a dryer uh, that shoots out 1300 CFM of air uh, that, uh, that will aid you in drying the car. It's on a, on a Z-boom, on a boom pole. Uh, that um, you'll be able to walk 360 degrees around the car and not have to drag the hose. We do still have to size this hose, um, but I wanted to experiment with it and see how it worked. Uh, we've got some more tweaking to do there. The um, other concept that uh, will be coming in the future, which we've already set up for, notice you have two Mosmatic OG spec Mosmatic guns with a Mosmatic wand holder and an OG Cobra Jet hose. Um, we're going to make some custom length hoses right now. Uh, we need it to be about two feet shorter, but the concept here is one of these will have a essentially a foaming lance. So rather than doing a foam cannon, we'll have a metering system, a big soap tank, uh, and then you, this, this one here you'll be able to grab and foam the car. For now, it's set up as a traditional traditional wand and gun, um, but in the future here, not too distant future, we'll be able to foam without getting a foam cannon out. But the thing that's powering this room for pressure washing is a Krenzler K700TS. Uh, we originally thought that we would have, um, we would have three-phase power here, which we ended up not having, having available to us. Uh, so I had, uh, this is actually mine that was going to go on my wall because this is the only one in the U.S. right now. Um, the KWS 1200 we were planning on doing just for the fun of it. Uh, would do five gallons a minute. This does 3.3 gallons per minute, uh, but this is a single phase 30 amp machine. So this is feeding via a T, feeding the two booms overhead. The booms are able to pass by each other uh, and, uh, and we're able to, to get you know, all the way around the car without any issue. Uh, this room is 30, 30 by 30, uh, so pretty significant size, by 900, it's 900 square feet, excluding this, this, little, this little area here. The other thing that's in the utility closet here that's powering all of our hose reels around the lift over by the, the parking area and in the wash bay. This is a silent piston. Uh, this is a five horse compressor from FIAC. Uh, this, uh, this will do about, deliver about 30 CFM and we have a refrigerated dryer feeding our, our Alto 3 from Prevost into our Prevost lines uh, with a T316 flex line. That's just super, super clean. Mike killed it there. This operates at about 65 decibels, um, if you want to hear what it sounds like. The compressor's not going to run a whole heck of a lot, but when it does, it's actually pretty darn, pretty darn quiet for a compressor. Uh, we have some rubber feet on it, and uh, um, we'll drain it manually into like a bucket or something like that once a year. I mean, it's not, it's not going to, it's not going to have much of a condensation issue because this, there's a. There's a dehumidified line right there that's sucking all, de all humidity out of this room, removing 100 pints a day. Then here's our brain for our Mosmatic drying system, which Mike and I had to figure out how it works. Uh, we had to be on, on, on a call with, uh, with Mosmatic. This is designed for a, co a coin-operated car wash, so we had to get a, um, we had to get a transformer uh, to provide it with 24 volts to tell it to turn on, so we had to fumble through and figure out how that works. There's a, there's a switch here, a thumb switch that turns it on, and then there's a push button to turn it into you know, full output uh, on, on the unit. So you'd walk in here, turn it on, close the door, walk out, and then, and then walk around the car and dry it is the concept. Uh, but this room's pretty neat. We left some space here, so it looks a little unba unbalanced. We left space for our soap tank and our deionizer that'll be coming in the future as well. This here, so the timbre doors above the bucket filler will be where we'll put all of our wash material, GSF and our foam cannons and whatever other towel, drying towels. But for now, uh, until those timbre doors show up in a few months, I put all of our washing material here. You can see uh, John is uh, OG sold out on the process. So he's got five of everything, which is, which is way cool to see. Super, super awesome. And then back here is our unfinished. We're going to do Swiss tracks in here. Uh, we ran out of Swiss Tracks gas, but this is a genius room. This is an unfinished utility closet. Um, you can see our, our, um, our, our hose coming in. These lights can actually color shift. The whole place has, um, 
we couldn't get the Cree lighting in time, so it has some, some lights that uh, aren't my preference. I don't even remember the brand of them. They were supposed to be 5K, but they couldn't get them, so they're 4K. Uh, all of these uh, recess fixtures are uh, Lutron uh, Ketra, which are fully color selectable. Uh, right now it's set to uh, 2700K. Uh, we're going to force them once this system gets complete. But we're going to force them to stay at 4K so they match the lights out there. But generally in your garage, you want 5 to 6500 uh, Kelvin. Uh, the audio system in here is fed from a um, from a uh, uh, an NAD M10 and then the audio control Avalon G4, which I talked about earlier. Uh, I'm actually going to run an extension line out of here and do a direct room calibration uh, on the room now that we have everybody out of here and it's cleaned up. Probably do that tomorrow morning. Here's our few of extra cabinets that are going to be going. Uh, we're waiting on a couple more to finish up the array. And here is our Speed Queen TC5, and then the matching matching dryer. Uh, so this is where he'll take care of microfiber towels. He's got uh, he's got this loaded up with liquid death. Um, we put the fridge in here because we couldn't figure out where to put it, where it looked nice. Uh, but this room will get cleaned up and finished up. We do Swiss tracks, change the color temp. But this room is going to stay utility. It's going to stay open, stay unfinished. It will look better when the lighting color temperature change and the flooring's in here. Uh, but this is where we do all the mechanical stuff when necessary. This is the vacuum system. You can also see the conduits. So this is what we're, we're unsure of is can we run a 50 foot conduit with a Mosmatic dryer and still get amount of the amount of output we're hoping for. So we're gonna have to play with that. And then our pressure washer lines also are feeding two 50 foot lines feeding our boom poles as well through this room, uh, as well as our water feed coming in. And then we have a, um, a modern day uh, silent master uh, um, uh, vacuum system. Thanks to Nick Jones, we learned about this from him. Uh, I haven't chased vacuums yet, uh, but we have a hide a hose system. There's three ports inside of the building uh, where you can pull the hose out and vacuum whatever's necessary. I'll show you that here in the wash bay. But this is our our uh, our, our, our our dedicated uh, area for storage. So here's our hide a hose. If you haven't seen this before. You pull your hose out. This is a 35 foot hose, right? And so the concept would be, you do this, you lock your hose down. I lock it down, I turn it on. I'm able to walk out here, take care of my car in any form or fashion I want. I've got another one on the other side of the car with a 50 foot hose. That 50 foot hose will reach halfway across the garage. But then when I'm done with it, I unlock. And you do that, it, it actually worked out quite well that uh, we have a, you know, we have a Schluter joint and then a really solid um, um, tile. You want to do that. So that piece of advice, if you're going to do that, because a lot of times that hose whips back in there if you don't, if you don't control it. And so the wash bay, I'm super excited about. It really turned out fantastic well. It's the perfect size. This is much bigger than a normal car wash bay. That's why we've got to play with how our boom poles are set up. I don't have a lot of experience doing these. We've done a few dozen of them, um, but I haven't done one myself in person. This is the first time I was physically doing it, and it turned out great. Another couple of things in here you'll notice. We have full Elon camera security system, uh, and then we have a... Um, this is a uh, backflow uh, that we also learned about from Nick Jones, uh, suggestion from Slot Drain that there's a line, a, fr a freshwater line that will help wash out the drain if necessary. Bathroom is in progress here. So um, we didn't have anything to do with the bathroom, but the you know, Toto toilet, it's a Newport brass head um, and uh, black ceilings with Harbor Gray walls, always flat, flat walls. Flat walls, white dove trim, perfect, and the black ceiling. So let's go upstairs and show you the office, which is pretty darn incredible. Um, so you'll notice 100 pint ultra airs. So there are one, two, 300 pint ultra airs. There was one in the utility closet. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, there's six mini splits. They're 24,000 BTU, so roughly two ton. I believe they're all two ton units. 
Um, we, you know, I talked with the air conditioning specialists here on why didn't they do spiral and a couple of five ton units. The cost difference was somewhere in the neighborhood of double. Um, so I think the air conditioning system in here was somewhere around, these are around $5,000 installed each. And so you're $30,000, $35,000 installed versus doing this. This would have probably needed at least three, if not four or five ton AC units at say nine grand, you know, nine grand, eight grand, maybe closer to 10 grand a piece. So, you know, the AC system with the ultra airs and everything was somewhere in the $40,000 range. It would have been closer to 75, 80 had they done spiral and had to do duct work and everything like that throughout. So the stair idea, this was uh, the owner John's idea, was to do a metal stair with a Swiss tracks tread. Uh, we learned about this. We saw um, uh, Ka do this up in um, at the Cote d'Ivoire Collective, something similar to this, and uh, it actually worked out pretty nicely. The stairs are a little, a little metally, a little soft, but you know we're figuring out how to do this as we go through it. But this is where his office is to be determined. This landing area and extra space. The entire system, the entire area is controlled by uh, Lutron Homelink, which again, I didn't have anything to do with, but um, uh, Homelink system, so he's can full, has fully, it's full lighting automation throughout the whole, the whole compound. The whole compound is about 300 acres. The main compound is about 150 acres. Uh, there's another hangar next door um, that's, I think the hangar is another 50 by 100, but not as tall as ceilings. Uh, but this area is likely going to be a flight simulator and a, what do you call those, racetrack simulator thingies, whatever that thing's called, I forget, he's going to be doing one of those, and then some, some seating area. But this, this is his office, which is way cool. We've got some work to do on acoustic treatments, but um, you've got full, you know, 5 sixteenths glass, you know, half inch glass with this really trick, you know, a pulley or barn door type system. Bryce spent two days on this, wiring this up. Um, but if you notice, this looks familiar. If you've seen any of my garage uh, or any of my desks, I'm a bit of a desk junkie. So the setup is um, Herman Miller chair, blue tree top, 30 inch deep, 30 inch deep, 84 by 84 uh, uplift base with uh, commercial uh, legs. I mean, you can hear the, the echo in here. So we got GIK Acoustics coming out to work on the acoustic treatment. Um, but dual LG 5K monitors on a Mika mount. Uh, so this is a, 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 a Yellow Tech Mika. Uh, this is pretty cool. So this was John's idea to have for, for doing meetings, hosting meetings. He also records a lot of the meetings. There's a lot of training. Uh, of people and so uh, we have our mic boom here, which I think we're gonna need to get longer uh, But this makes me envious a couple of things that I want to do. I love the Mika mounts. Dynaudio LYD 5s, Dynaudio Sub 18S And then we have a bridge dock all Thunderbolt 3 both displays will be doing you know 27 inch 5k uh, And our control our monitor studio monitor control is via an Apollo Twin X and he also has an Elgato stream deck where he can switch scenes uh, when hosting, you know, teams meetings and stuff like that. Because now we're doing a lot of that and a lot of that stuff. But the desk is a stand-up desk, so it will transition height as well to stand up. So next thing in here will be some acoustic treatment, um, some additional lighting, and uh, and uh, but the, the the desk thing here. This was we had a lot to do with this. You know, John and I together kind of collaborated on what we we're going to end up doing. Uh, Bryce had to order a few things. Right now, we have our, our my computer in here just running this uh, until our, uh, our Thunderbolt dock should show up here tomorrow so we can finish it up. But uh, Bryce has spent at least 10 straight hours laying on his back for next level wiring. He gets to give you, give you an idea. We're in a big glass room here. Uh, and so this is just incredible. You can sit, look out at the wash bay, look down at the cars and uh, actually get a lot of work done as well. Uh, he's probably gonna do some sort of seating area. His interior designer is gonna come in here and do sort of decorate this area. We took care of the hard part, which is, which is the desk. So let's go downstairs and I'll send you off. It's always cool to look at, you get a better view of all the D-badged black, you know, Cox hose reels, 
uh, all of the work that went into all the Prevost piping. Uh, Mike spent many, many days on the scissor lift here uh, taking, care of, uh, taking care of this place. It's been really cool. So that's a wrap. You know, I had a few moments where I kind of got choked up when I was turning the, the Core 59s on the first time. And just seeing all of my life's pursuit in one spot all at once. I'm super, super thankful to John and his family for inviting us here. Uh, Bryce, Kyle, Michael Wamba behind the camera, my dad, uh, Mike Figuera, uh, the f and Trevor, Trevor who I drove all the way up from, from uh, the villages from Orlando to come bring us the pressure washer at the 11th hour uh, when we found out three phase wasn't working. But um, we all did you know, 7 a.m.s to 12, you know, 12 a.m.s many, many times in order to get this thing together. We got here on a Sunday, took inventory, started first thing Monday, uh, and worked straight. Uh, John has a, it's a really, um, a really smart thing that I learned about. He, um, he bought us all our meals, and so we had all our meals coming in, so we never stopped working the whole time. Uh, we ate standing up most of the time, like my feet are killing me, but it's all worth it when you see it all come together. Uh, the really incredible part about this is we, you think about, you know, we spent 350 hours or so between all of us, you know, tw 10, 12, 14, 16 hours a day, uh, and it doesn't look like we did much, and I think that's a testament to how this went down. Uh, the, of course, the structure was built by a contractor, uh, but all of the detail, all of the things, you know, Mike, you know, using his talent, uh, Bryce using his talent, of course, Kyle designed this whole thing. Uh, me, Kyle, and John put our heads together to come up with what this would look like. And if you went back and looked at a render of what Kyle put together, it looks like that in person. And in fact, it looks even a little bit better than it did in the render. So thanks for being a part of this series. If you haven't watched the other parts of it, go check it out. Um, hit us up at, uh, at uh, you know, just go to obsessgarage.com and you can contact any of us if you're interested in having us design your garage. I don't know if you'll be able to talk us into coming and do your garage. It's hard to top this. We're staying in the guest house, catered meals the whole time. Um, and it's a hard, hard week of your life to go and put this thing together and do all the things. Snapping together 5,000 square feet of Swiss tracks and making the cuts is a big, big project. So thanks for being a part of this. Thanks for allowing us to do this. And uh, certainly thanks to John and his family for inviting us here and allowing us to come here. Uh, we'll be out here again, I can promise you that, to finish up the project with the last few things to button it up. Uh, and then um, I'm guessing in a couple of years as we come up with new stuff, we'll come out and revamp it. I'm excited to see this fill up with cars, with BMWs and Porsches, and, uh, and then hopefully come out here and maybe shoot some videos, wash some cars. So thanks for your support. Thanks for being a part of the series. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next Garage. As always, stay tuned for more crazy. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. See you soon.